Hi YouTube, today we're going to learn how to create a new TurboLister file. Uh, basically what this does by creating a new TurboLister file or a user file, it creates a database within the TurboLister program. And you can use that database when you are creating items that get stored in your inventory, they get stored to your user file database. Now, if you don't have a user file, then you'll need to do this top one to create a new user file. If for some reason, you know, you, you get in and out of your program a whole bunch and you already have a user file, you could do this middle option to open an existing TurboLister file. And the third option, of course, is to explore a sample TurboLister file. Um, some folks like to, to start out with a sample TurboLister file. My problem with the, the sample file is that a lot of times people will forget that they're in a user file. They'll create a bunch of items and then you can't upload them and they think that there's something wrong with the program. But there's nothing wrong with the program, it's just TurboLister has to be connected or have a token created between the program and your eBay account in order to upload those items. If you have a TurboLister sample file there, there's no connection between there. So you can create tons of content, you know, to your heart's content, but you can't really do anything with it. You'll have to export it and import it to a, a new user file when you create that. Kind of a pain, so I don't typically recommend using that. We're going to go ahead and create a new TurboLister file. Put in your eBay ID. If you list on more than one eBay site, so maybe you're in the US but you also list directly on the Canada site or the Australia site or whatever, you can check mark this box and then select from the list of sites that you list on. I'm going to say right now that you never want to select every single eBay site because what happens is the more countries you select, the larger the download is. There, It's an additional download, um, kind of like an update and the more you have in there, it can crash your system. So if you only list on the US, you know, don't select this. If it's only, you know, the US and CA, Canada, then just do those two. Just don't select a ton of sites. I don't list on other sites directly, so I'm not going to check mark that box. Um, this is just the how they're gonna connect you. Basically, I just always go through this. This is just security enhancements. You can't add a password protection to your file. I don't tend to do that. I'm the only one in my family who uses the TurboLister. I'm not too worried if anyone got on my computer anyway. It's not like state secrets in here, so I don't worry about doing password protection or anything like that later on. All right, and it has my user ID. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in my password. Hopefully I spell it right. I'm gonna click sign in. Okay, just like anything, you have to agree to the terms and conditions. So I agree. This kind of throws some people off because it reverts back to this view for a little bit. But it's going to go ahead and show your contact info. Excuse me, your contact information. Um, honestly, it doesn't really matter if your contact information in here is correct, um, because really, when you make sales, it's going to be with whatever information you have on the eBay website, which this information should be pulling from your eBay account. So I guess you could just use it as another means to make sure that your contact information on eBay is correct. But in any event, then you click Next. And then it's going to ask if you want to create a new item or if you want to synchronize. Uh, if you synchronize your data, you can select to basically... Um, bring in your active items or sold and your unsold items. It goes to the listing activity section of TurboLister. Um, so some folks like to, to see what they have going on. They synchronize all the time. I don't personally use the synchronize feature on TurboLister. I'd rather just go directly to the website. Um, again, it's more of an issue of it's an offline listing software, so it has to connect to eBay. Then it's got to communicate with eBay. It's got to transfer information back and forth. To me, that's just a pain. I would rather just go directly to the eBay website to see what's currently active or to do a search for something or if I'm checking out my sales, that kind of thing. But if you wanted to, you could synchronize. Um, but this is the end of create the creating user file process.